Hello, I'm Darren again. The topic for today's video comes from questions asking what is meant by the term betrayal trauma and what would the common effects of betrayal trauma be? So a trauma refers to a deeply distressing or disturbing experience that can overwhelm a person's ability to cope and can leave a long-lasting impact on their emotional, psychological, sometimes even their physical well-being. Betrayal trauma refers to the psychological and emotional distress experienced as a result of a betrayal by a trusted or relied upon individual or group. It's a deeply painful and disorientating experience that can have long-lasting effects on someone. It typically occurs in close relationships such as romantic partnerships, friendships or within families. However, it can also occur in institutions, organisations or groups. But the concept of betrayal trauma was first introduced by psychologist Jennifer Fried in the 1990s to describe the psychological consequences of betrayal by trusted individuals, the key term being trusted. It's often associated with experiences such as infidelity and deceit. However, it can involve emotional, physical, sexual, sometimes even financial abuse. But it encompasses situations where trust has been violated by someone the person relied on, someone they felt safe with, and it results in feelings of shock, disbelief, and emotional pain. Now that being said, the betrayal might not necessarily be an act as such. It could be a lack of action. For instance, someone could be really hurt or perhaps badly mistreated somehow, but the person or the people who were meant to protect them, support them, care about them, do nothing. In extreme cases, Sometimes they allowed it to happen. But when looking at the impact of betrayal trauma, it is important to note that the effects can vary from person to person. So factors such as the severity or the duration of the betrayal, who the person was, the nature of the relationship, the individual's resilience, their support systems, and indeed prior experiences, all of these things can influence how someone is affected by the trauma. So some of the effects of betrayal trauma can include, first of all, emotional distress. When I think in the immediate afterfact of a betrayal, I think the first thing most people experience is shock. It's like it came out of nowhere. They can't believe it. And it's not that the betrayal was just an oversight or an error. I think one of the contributing factors to being so shocking is if there was intent. The person they trusted is not who they thought they were, not what they thought they were, or perhaps who they were led to believe they were. So perceptions, beliefs, sense of reality suddenly change can also trigger intense and overwhelming emotions such as anger and sadness. There could be confusion, disbelief. There can also be shame, guilt and grief. The person may experience mood swings, emotional numbness or feeling emotionally overwhelmed as they try to come to terms with the betrayal. And depending on the nature of the betrayal, it can shatter someone's fundamental assumptions about the world, relationships, sometimes even their own personal safety. Their sense of identity can be challenged, disrupt their understanding of themselves and their values. They may question their beliefs, their personal boundaries, core aspects of their identity as a result of the betrayal. How they view the world, the betrayer, even themselves can change. Those who have experienced betrayal trauma may develop hypervigilance and a heightened sensitivity to potential threats in other situations and other relationships. They struggle with issues of trust. They might struggle with intimacy, vulnerability, or expressing trust with other people. They might become highly skeptical, suspicious of other people's intentions, making it challenging to reach out for or even accept support from others. They might experience difficulties in trying to form new relationships out of fear of being hurt again. It can even bring up a strain or perhaps rupture existing relationships. It can bring up questions like, who knew about this? Why didn't they tell me? Why did no one warn me? And rebuilding trust can be a lengthy and a complex process. The trauma of a betrayal can significantly impact an individual's self-esteem. They might question their own worth, struggle with feelings of inadequacy. Some might even blame themselves. They may find it difficult to trust their own judgment or to make decisions confidently and can lead to people experiencing higher levels of anxiety, depression and lower self-confidence. They may begin to exhibit avoidance behaviours. and The profound sense of betrayal can also lead to feelings of shame. There's the shame of having trusted, perhaps not knowing better. Depending on the situation, depending on the person, sometimes there is the shame of being a victim which can be exacerbated if they're in an environment where other people are telling them they should have known better. 
I often think a lack of empathy and compassion from others can hinder someone in asking for help out of fear of being judged harshly or becoming the focus of gossip. This can lead to victims internalising what happened and constantly ruminating, often exacerbating their symptoms. Trauma can sometimes lead to cognitive distortions and difficulties in processing information. People constantly second-guess themselves, questioning their own judgments as well as the motives and the intentions of others. If you will, they develop a negative worldview. They may also develop symptoms associated with PTSD, such as intrusive thoughts, flashbacks and nightmares. There could be emotional dysregulation, withdrawal from others. And these symptoms can significantly disrupt daily functioning and their quality of life. In some cases, the emotional distress might lead to physical symptoms as well, such as sleep disturbances, changes in appetite, headaches, muscle tension, and an increased susceptibility to illness. So that's a brief outline of betrayal trauma and some of the common effects that it can have on people. But just like how the impact of the trauma can vary from person to person, so can the recovery. Each individual's response and recovery process can be unique, influenced by factors such as their social support network, previous life experiences, and their personal resilience. And when it comes to recovery, building trust is a challenging but a necessary step. Now, in an ideal world, if possible, both the victim and the perpetrator need to actively engage in a process of rebuilding trust through open communication, empathy, and consistent actions. And sadly, this isn't an ideal world. Perpetrators aren't always open to acknowledging the impact of their behaviour. Some even blame their victims. Or they may even keep on making promises that they never keep. And this sort of thing can really add to the victim's already damaged sense of self. And I often think a good place to start is to seek support from perhaps a counsellor or a psychotherapist to help navigate the healing process. In therapy, people can have a space to express their pain, their anger and their confusion. People can process their emotions, develop coping strategies, rebuild their sense of self-worth and work towards healing. Also, having support from other people, loved ones, engaging in self-care practices, participating in support groups can also be beneficial for those navigating betrayal trauma. Having others acknowledge and validate experiences can help people regain a sense of self-worth and trust in their own perceptions. Establishing healthy boundaries and practicing self-care are also crucial in creating a sense of safety and empowerment. And it takes patience and self-compassion. I know it may take time, but as I often say when it comes to healing, recovery is a journey. It's not a mad dash to a finish line. Now, as always, there are many things I may have missed. Please feel free to add them in the comment box below. But if you have experienced betrayal trauma, if there's anything you find helpful in your recovery, please feel free to share that. Someone else reading it might benefit from your wisdom and your experience. And if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.